What you see on my chart right now is a crypto arbitrage indicator. I'm using PineScript version six syntax to achieve this, and I'm using a dynamic security function call to scan through all the major crypto exchanges, comparing the high and low prices on the current loaded asset to every corresponding asset on the other exchanges to find the largest price discrepancy or differential between all of those exchanges. So right here, you can see on my chart that I have Coinbase loaded on this top chart. And down here, I have Binance loaded. These are the same market, Bitcoin, US dollar pair, same time frame, daily chart. And if we focus on this price action here, you can see on this particular bar on this day, on Coinbase, the low of the day was here. On Binance, it was down here. And that was a difference of about 6.5%. Now this indicator is just a proof of concept. It was just an idea I came up with to test this new dynamic security function call. I don't know if this is actually tradable. It probably is, but you'd have to be pretty damn quick to take advantage of these price movements because it's, as you can see here, this is a wick. If I go down to a lower time frame, and maybe we'll do that now, what is the date there? Uh, it is 8th of December, 2023. I bet this move happened very quickly on Binance. It was probably a whale dumping their Bitcoin for a brief moment. So let's go have a quick look at 8th of December, 2023 on the one hour time frame. Yeah, and sure enough, this is the wick that caused that move. So this would have been a very quick uh, moment in time. And the reason this wick probably got bought up so quickly is from arbitrage traders. So if you're not familiar with what arbitrage is, it's basically buying and selling the same asset at different prices on different exchanges to lock in the price differential or, or the spread. So if you bought Bitcoin down here at about 40K, just over 40K on Binance, you could then go and sell it over on Coinbase for about 43K. And you've made about $3,000 profit right there. And you don't care what Bitcoin does from there. You don't care if it's bullish or bearish. You're just locking in the spread. That's what arbitrage is essentially. Now arbitrage is being traded out of the markets by uh, hedge funds and high frequency traders almost completely. There's basically no arbitrage opportunities uh, or they're very, very rare, especially for retail traders. But obviously the more liquid a market is, the less people trading a market, the more arbitrage opportunities appear and the more you can take advantage of them as a retail trader. So this is Bitcoin. You're not going to have a lot of luck trading arbitrage on Bitcoin, but on um, some sort of altcoin that's low liquidity, you might have better luck. So for example, let's pull up coin market cap and have a look at some random coin down here. Let's have a look at, let's have a look at, uh, let's have a look at a meme coin, Pepe. Just because I know these coins go ballistic in the retail market space. Pepe. So let's compare Coinbase to problem with this script is the tickers must match. So US tether won't count. I could load up a tether pair, but for now let's just stick to the US dollar pair just for example purposes. You can see this even works on the hourly chart here. Um, we have a Bitfinex arbitrage opportunity there. But let's go out to the daily. Oh, this coin was only listed on Coinbase about a month ago. So I'll stick to the hourly time frame. Let's have a look at Bitfinex then. So on this bar here, Bitfinex had a 3% arbitrage opportunity. Finex, Pepe, US dollar. And there you go. See if I hover over this red bar here, you can see uh, th that's this bar here. These are the same bar. This one has a wick to the downside. So on these less liquid pairs, you might actually get an arbitrage opportunity that is actually tradable. By the way, if you don't know how I've set up my chart here, I've just split the chart and synced everything. Um, that makes it so it's really easy to compare these signals. All right, so let's have a look at the source code. I'll bring it up here. I've kept this script intentionally as simple as possible. You could make this a lot more complicated. Um, you could detect multiple exchanges, uh, using arrays and that sort of thing. But I just want to show you guys how to use the security function, request security function in the local scope of a if and for statement. In PineScript version five, you couldn't do this, at least not until very recently. They added a new parameter to the indicator function that enables dynamic security requests. But in version six of PineScript, this is enabled by default. So here's what I've done. I've got three inputs here. In fact, this input debug doesn't need to be there. That's from an older version of the scripts. 
So I've only got two user inputs here. I've got my crypto exchange list and my minimum distance as a percentage in order to trigger a signal on my chart. So these are the major exchanges I could find listed on uh, TradingView. There may be others I've missed. It doesn't really matter. Add your own in if you want to or take some out if you don't use any of these exchanges. Ideally, if you were trading this, this isn't trading advice, but if I was trading this, I would only list the exchanges I have accounts on. I've separated them by commas. That makes it really easy to split this list into an array of strings using the str.split function. This will split any string. So this string here, it will split this string by commas into an array so that each string here, each exchange is put into its own array element. That enables us to loop through this array, get the high and low or any other value for that matter, from this exchange out of our list and the current ticker. So siminfo.ticker will get the current ticker that in this case, that'll be BTC USD. So this security function expression here would build a string out of our list. So the first one is Coinbase. We would have my childish drawing of Coinbase dot dot BTC USD. Lucky I am a better coder and trader than I am an artist. This is what would be built on this line of code when this for loop uh, hits this element. So if you are familiar with PineScript at all, this function call should look pretty familiar to you. If you're not familiar with this, go and check out my website, pinescriptmastery.com. I have a free four or five hour long basics course there. It doesn't cover the security function, but it will help you get started with PineScript. If you're new and this all looks like gibberish, that's a good place to start. For those of you who are more familiar with PineScript, you should understand what's happening here. Now this function does repaint. We want repainting on this particular use case of this function because we want to detect these um, differentials, this price difference in real time. Otherwise we can't get alerted when there's a price discrepancy or arbitrage opportunity. So this script is simply getting the high and low of every uh, symbol that I've loaded on my chart across all these exchanges it's scanning through them all. It's checking if the current symbols price high, high value is greater than the saved high value. If that is the case, then we have found an exchange that has a price that is higher than the current market price on my chart. If that is the case, we save that highest price by assigning it to this variable here. And we also save the exchange that this occurred on so that we can draw our little label here. We do the same thing for price low. All of this only works on a crypto market. So siminfo.type will return crypto only on crypto markets. Moving on, we get our price differential. So this just converts the uh, price high difference into a percentage. So that is the price difference uh, if I find a high value here. So this signal occurred on this bar here. So if I measure out from that high, up to that red line, we should get about 3.3%. It's pretty hard to measure that accurately when the charts are zoomed out. That's what this little formula gets us. Next thing we do is just create two Boolean values. This just makes it easier to draw um, everything onto the chart. We just check if the price high percentage difference is greater than or equal to the input. So if I bring up my settings menu, we have this minimum percentage difference by default that's set to 3%. If we have a greater than 3% move from the high or the low, that will draw a signal. If I bring this right down to let's say 0.1%, we're going to get signals all over our chart because that is not an uncommon amount of price difference for exchanges to vary. But you can see, look at even on Bitcoin, all these theoretical arbitrage opportunities if you had a very fast system set up to buy and sell on the corresponding exchanges really quickly. These are all potential, very small arbitrage opportunities. Now this is too small probably to profit off because of commission costs and everything, but you get the idea. That's why I set it to three, just to minimize the uh, signals drawn onto the chart. Then we plot the uh, highest price and lowest price. That's our blue and red lines here. And then I check if we have a valid price high arbitrage or price low arbitrage signal, then we uh, convert our price difference into a string, a readable whole number string formatted to two decimal places. We draw a label 
uh, displaying that information onto the chart with a transparent background just because I figure uh, we don't want this covering price action. It's, I figure this is readable as it is, but obviously depending on your chart style, you'd wanna change this color style. And then we trigger an alert and I need to copy this below for the low price. Uh, change all of this. And there we go, that's the script. It's a very simple script. As I said, I don't know if it's even tradable. It's just a proof of concept to use the security function in a dynamic way by scanning through several exchanges. There's obviously a lot more use cases for this. For example, I also created a script that combines all of the volume from all the exchanges, crypto exchanges, that, that same list. So if I add volume on here and we hover over the current bar, you can see that up here, the current uh, Coinbase volume is 81 Bitcoin, 84 Bitcoin there. Down here, the combined Bitcoin volume for today across all the major exchanges is 300 Bitcoin. So this just gives you a better reading on volume using the exact same method of looping through all the major exchanges. And that gives you the advantage of knowing when a spike in volume on your exchange is maybe just a whale making a trade on that exchange and it's not broad market activity. Um, so I'll release that script in a different video. This one is already long enough. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, if you're watching this on YouTube, if, if you're watching this in the PineScript Mastery course, the volume script is already up in there. Thanks for watching guys. Good luck with your trading. As always, the source code to this script will be on my website. You can access the link to that by going to the link on your screen right now or clicking the little card in the top right corner here. Good luck with your training guys. Have fun, I'll speak with you in the next video. Crypto is going crazy right now, it's pretty awesome. I'm having a record profitable year, which is obviously very nice. Hopefully you guys are too. I'll speak with you guys in the next video, take care.